Before I proceed to the lesson, let me discuss briefly some basic stuff. The strings are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These spaces are called frets. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, and so on. This is a chord box. It is a representation of the fretboard of the guitar held upright. The vertical lines represent the strings. The horizontal lines are the knot and the fret wires. So this is 1st fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret. By the way, if you want to know more about the parts of the guitar, click this link for that lesson. When a chord box is filled with dots and other information, then it is a diagram for a specific chord, like this. The dots represent the fingertips. The number on a dot indicates which finger to use to press a specific string. One for the index finger, two for the middle finger, three for the ring finger, and four for the pinky. X indicates a dead string. A dead string is a string that is not part of a chord, so that string is not to be played. A letter O indicates an open string, not pressed or fretted, but is part of the chord and it must be played. To learn more about reading chord diagrams, click this link for that lesson. Now let's discuss the chords for this song. A minor chord. Looking at the diagram, you see dot number one on the second string at first fret, and that's the tip of your index finger on the second string at first fret. Dot number two, that's for your middle finger on the fourth string at second fret. Dot number three, that's your ring finger on the third string at second fret. And you see X on the sixth string, so that means this string is not to be played, but there is a letter O next to the fifth string and also on the first string. So the fifth and the first strings are to be played. They are part of the chord. Although they are not pressed, they are open strings and they are part of the chord. A minor 7. Looking at the diagram, dot number 1, that's your index finger, on the second string at first fret. And dot number 2, that's your middle finger, on the fourth string at second fret. And you have open strings, the fifth, the third string, and the first strings are all open. But the number six is marked with an X, so it's a dead string. If you noticed, earlier you have learned A minor, which is this shape. A minor seven is just like an A minor, but without the ring finger. So if this is A minor, Take the ring finger out, and it becomes A minor 7th. D minor. The diagram shows dot number 1, that's your index finger, on the first string at first fret. So right here. Dot number 2, middle finger, goes on the third string at second fret. Dot number 3, that's your ring finger, on the second string at third fret here. The fourth string is marked with an O, this one, so this is part of the chord. But the fifth and the sixth strings are marked with X, so they are not part of the chord. So you strum four strings only for D minor. D minor seventh. The chord diagram shows dots with the same number, one, and they are placed on the first string at the first fret and also 2nd string at 1st fret. That means you will be using your index finger to press both strings. You cannot do that with the tip of your index finger as you have to press both strings, the 1st and the 2nd, at the same time. In this case, you're going to use the pad of your index finger and that would be accomplished by this way. So you press both strings with the pad and then the other dot, number 2, and that's the tip of your middle finger on the third string at second fret. And the fourth string is marked with O, so that's open. But the fifth and the sixth are marked with X. So the fifth and the sixth are not part of this chord. 
So for this chord, you strum four strings. The next chord to learn is C major. But for this song, I suggest two shapes for C major. The first one is the simple open C major, which is looking at the diagram. You have your index finger on the second string at first fret, middle finger on the fourth string at second fret, and ring finger on the fifth string at third fret. The first string and the third string are marked with O, so they are left open. And the sixth string is marked with X, so this is not part of the chord. So for C major chord with this shape, you strum five strings. The other shape that I suggest to be used for this song is the bar form of C major chord. Looking at the diagram, you see two strings marked with dot number one. That's the fifth string and the first string. And they are at third fret. In this case, you will be using the pad of your index finger to press all five strings. And then the dot number two, that's your middle finger on the fourth string at fifth fret. So here. And then dot number three, that's your ring finger on the third string at fifth fret. And that number four, your pinky on the second string at fifth fret. And you have six string marked with X. You can just lay your index across all six strings, but don't strum the sixth string. So for this shape, you also have to play five strings or strum five strings. I'll discuss with you when to use this simple shape and when to use this bar form of C major chord. F major chord, and again, looking at the diagram, you see three dots numbered one, and they are at first fret. One on the sixth string, on the second string, and at first string. So all you have to do is just lay your index finger, the pad of your index finger, across all six strings. And then, dot number two, that's your middle finger, on the third string at second fret, ring finger on the fifth string at third fret, and pinky on the fourth string at third fret. And there is no string marked with X, so this means that all the strings are to be played. G minor seventh. Looking at the diagram, you see five dots numbered one. And they are all at third fret. So here, at third fret. So one on the sixth string, on the fourth string, on the third, second, and first string. And that means just lay your index across all six strings. And then one more dot, number three, that's for your ring finger, on the fifth string at fifth fret. And there's no string that is marked with X, so all strings are to be played. Next chord is C dominant seventh suspended. And looking at the diagram, you see dot number one, and there are three of them, and all are at third fret. And to accomplish that, all you have to do is just use your index finger, the pad of your index finger to press the strings. And then your num dot number three, that's for your middle finger on the fourth string at fifth fret, and your pinky on the second string at sixth fret. So you'll have to stretch your fingers, especially the pinky. And there is a dead string. There's a string marked with an X, the number six string, this one. So this means that you are not going to strum this string. So you strum five strings only. The next chord is C dominant seventh. There's a simple open shape for this chord, which is this one. But for this song, I'm suggesting for another shape which is given in this chord diagram. And as you can see, there are three dots numbered one. All of them are at third fret, one on the fifth string, one on the third string, and another one on the first string. So again, we'll be using the pad of the index finger to press those strings. And then the ring finger, that's the number three, on the fourth string at fifth fret, and that number four, represented by the pinky, on the second string at fifth fret and there is a string that is marked with an x the sixth string so you strum 
five strings. The next chord is B flat major. And for this song, I'm suggesting for two shapes for this chord. The first one is given in this diagram, which will be used for the intro. And as you can see, you have dots number three, all at sixth fret, one on the sixth string and one on the second and first strings. So again, just lay your index, the pad of your index finger across all six strings. Number two, that's your middle finger on the third string at seventh fret. That number three, ring finger on the fifth string at eighth fret. That number four, that's your pinky on the fourth string at eighth fret. So here, this is the shape. No string that is marked with an X. So all the strings are played. And the other shape for this chord is given in this diagram. And as you can see, there are two dots numbered one, both at first fret, one on the fifth string, and another one on the first string. So again, we use the pad of the index finger to press these strings. And uh, now dot number two, that's for your middle finger on the fourth string at third fret. Dot number three, that's your ring finger on the third string at third fret. And dot number four, that's your pinky on the second string at third fret. And the number six string is dead, so you strum five strings. Mm -hmm. Next chord is C minor, and the diagram shows two dots numbered one, both are at third fret, one on the fifth string and another one on the first string. So we'll be using the pad of index finger to press five strings or even six. And then, and then that number two, that's your middle finger on the second string at fourth fret. That number three, that's for your ring finger on the fourth string at fifth fret. And that number four, that's for your pinky on the third string at fifth fret. Number six is marked with an X. So we strum from five, from the fifth string down. So we strum five strings only. Next chord is E flat major. And again, for this song, I'll be suggesting two shapes for this chord. The first one is given in this diagram. And you see two dots numbered one, both at sixth fret, one on the fifth string, and one on the first string. And again, use the pad of your index finger to press these strings. Then number two, that's for your middle finger on the fourth string at eighth fret. That number three, that's for your ring finger on the third string at eighth fret. And number four is your pinky on the second string at eighth fret. The number six is marked with X, so you don't strum it. So you strum five strings only. You may notice that this shape is also the same shape for B flat here. But B flat is right here with the index finger at first fret. And E flat is using the same shape but with the index finger at sixth fret. The other shape that I'm going to suggest for the same chord is given in this diagram. And you see two dots numbered one, both are third fret, one on the third string and another one on the first string. So again, you'll be using the pad of your index finger to press those strings. And then that number two, that's for your middle finger on the second string at fourth fret. That number three, for your ring finger on the fourth string at fifth fret. And that number four, that's for the pinky on the fifth string at sixth fret. So this one, this is the shape for E flat. The sixth string is marked with an X, so you don't strum it. You strum five strings. How I would start the song? I'll begin with the two bass notes, which is what we are going to discuss next. The first one is B flat. Earlier, you have learned that there is a chord with the name B flat, and for that chord, you strum either five or six strings. But for this bass note, it's just one string that you are going to pick. Take a look at this diagram. Five strings are marked with X, so these strings are not in play. And to play this bass note, you only have to pick the fifth string at first fret, so here. 
and let it ring. That's it. This time you just played a bass note. It's not a chord. It's actually the root tone of B flat. This is B flat major chord. If you remember from the chord diagram lesson of this chord, the sixth string is not to be played. It's marked with an X. And so the lowest note is this one on the fifth string at first fret. Strumming these strings, you're playing a chord. But for the bass note, you're just playing the lowest tone, which is this one. And to distinguish a bass note from a chord, the name of the bass note is preceded by a forward slash. So this is written as slash B flat. Then it is followed by another bass note called slash D sharp. And here's the diagram for this bass note. It looks similar to B flat. Both are on the fifth string. The difference is their positions on the fretboard. Slash B flat is at first fret. Slash D sharp is at sixth fret. And this is the sound. So you just learned two bass notes. This one, B flat, written as slash B flat. And this one, D sharp, written as slash D sharp. Now that we have discussed the chords and the bass notes, let's move on to how to apply these chords and bass notes. For this song, we have to do eight note counting for the rhythm. The tempo is one, two, three, four, one, two. Now, eight note counting for this is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And if you want to learn more about counting as well as the rhythmic patterns, specifically the basic rhythmic patterns, I would recommend that you click this link for that lesson. Now let's begin with the intro. The intro is five measures long, as you can see. The first measure is a pickup measure. So you count off one, two, three, and on count four, that's when you play the first bass note slash B flat. So it goes like this, one, two, three, four. And then you would see that on the second measure, Right at count one, you have the bass note slash D sharp. And to play the second bass note slash D sharp, it goes like this. One, two, three, four, one. So you pick the bass note B flat, count four of the first measure. You pick it and slide up to sixth fret. And then on the next measure, right at count one, that's when you pick the same string. And by this time, your index finger is already at 6th fret. So again, at a slower tempo, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and there. And on the second measure, you will see two chords, B flat major and E flat major. B flat major is right at count 2 and E flat major is between counts 2 and 3. So you play E flat major in between counts two and three. And that is why we have to do eight note counting. And also the reason why I'm suggesting two shapes for B flat, this one is one shape for B flat and the other one is right here at sixth fret, is because of getting a nice transition from the second bass note, which is slash D sharp to B flat. If you notice before you play B flat, at count two on the second measure, it's preceded by the bass note slash D sharp at count one. So since the slash D sharp bass note is played on the fifth string at sixth fret, and this is also where you have your index finger for B flat. So this shape is the appropriate shape for B flat to play than this. So again, from slash B flat at count four on the first measure, two slash D sharp on the second measure at count one, and then right at count two of that measure, you have the B flat chord. So at the slower tempo, one and two and three and four and one and two, there, right? So it's easy to transition or to move to B flat major chord 
when you already have your finger at 6th fret. So 1 and 2. And then between counts 2 and 3, that's where you have the E flat major chord. And also, this is the reason why I'm suggesting this shape for E flat. The other shape that I suggest is this one. But for the intro, this shape for E flat is the one that is more appropriate for the sequence of notes and chords that we're doing for the intro. Because and you already have your index finger at 6th fret. So from B flat, from this shape, it's so easy to transition to E flat by just keeping the index finger and reforming these three fingers to this shape. So from B flat it count to and then to E flat. So all you have to do is just keep your index finger there. At a slower tempo, it goes like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And you may notice that you don't see any chord in the third measure. But it's because that E flat, you have to hold it for the rest of the second measure up to the third measure. So it lasts up to the third measure. And it goes something like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and there, up to the third measure. Actually, while the E flat major chord is ringing for the next measure, you would hear the melody. And that's what's happening on the third measure. And then on the fourth measure, you'll see C minor right at count 1. And this is the shape for C minor. And B flat major chord at count 2. This time, the shape for B flat major that we are going to use is this one. Because this shape is quite close to C sharp minor than doing this shape for B flat. So on the fourth measure, with C minor at count 1, going to count 2, we have the B flat. And then, it is followed immediately between counts 2 and 3 by C minor again. So, for the third measure, this is what's happening. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... So again, for the third measure, this is the sequence of chords. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... So you hold C minor up to the remaining beats of the fourth measure and then on the last measure on the fifth measure you have B flat and we'll be using this shape for B flat you have B flat at count one and at count three we have C major chord and this is the shape that we are going to use for that and this is the reason why I'm suggesting this shape of C major chord because it's the same shape as B flat all you have to do is bring the whole thing two frets up for easy transition. So all you have to do is just skip the shape and slide it up two frets up. So from the fourth measure to the fifth measure, the sequence is like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and give thanks. And that's the beginning of the verse. Now to demo the whole intro, it goes like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 1 and 2 and 3 and give thanks. There. The song is in the form of A, B. If you look at the song, if you analyze the paragraphs, it's like there's just two kinds of paragraphs. One for the verse and one for the refrain. You have this, give thanks with a grateful heart. That line starts the verse. And it's repeated. And then the line that goes with, now let the weak say I am strong. And that's considered as the refrain. And you repeat that again. So it's just like you have two paragraphs that's been repeated. And then it goes alternately. Now let's talk about the verse. The chords for the verse are F, C, D minor. A minor, 
B flat, F major, and D minor seven, E flat, G minor seven, C seventh. Now let's talk about the playing time of these chords for the verse. Most of these chords are played for one measure each. Starting with F major, one and two and three and four and and then C for another measure. One and two and three and four and and then D minor for one measure. One and two and three and four and and then to A minor for a measure. One and two and three and four and and then B flat measure for one measure also. One and two and three and four and but for the next two chords, F and D minor 7, they are in a split measure. Meaning, these two chords appear in that measure. F, right at count 1, and D minor 7, right at count 3. So it goes like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And then, E flat is for one measure. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And then the next two chords, G minor 7th and C dominant 7th, are also in a split measure. G minor 7 right at count 1, and C7 right at count 3. So it goes like this, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... It's best to play this part at quarter note rhythm. And again, if you want to learn more about basic rhythmic patterns like whole note, half note, quarter note, and eighth note, just refer to the link that I mentioned earlier. So to demo this part, and if our tempo is like this, one and two and three and four and, I'll do quarter note rhythm, and this is how it goes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and So you notice that quarter note rhythm is simply strumming on every beat. One and two and three and four and... And then the same verse is repeated. Now this time, I would suggest for eight note rhythmic pattern. And eight note rhythmic pattern is do a downstroke on every beat. So I count one, two, three, and four. But in betweens, where you have the letter ends, as you can see here, you have the upstroke. So it goes like this. One and two and three and four and. So to play the verse at eight note rhythm, it goes like this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. And. keep the same rhythm to the remaining parts of the song. So that means playing the refrain on 8 note rhythm. And these are the chords for the refrain part. A minor 7th, D minor 7th, G minor 7th, C dominant 7th, A minor, D minor, E flat, and C major. The playing time of these chords for refrain is one measure, so you play each chord for one measure. And the appropriate basic rhythmic pattern for this is 8 note rhythm. So to demo the refrain on 8 note rhythm, it goes like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. So 
that's how you would play the verse and the refrain. With exception on the last time the refrain is played, which is actually the last part of the song. If you look at the refrain played the last time, you'd see more chords. On the first measure of refrain is for A minor 7. So you play A minor 7 for one measure and the uh, rhythmic pattern is 8 note. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... But you'd see the chords D minor, D minor 7, C major, and F major chord. These four chords are within a measure. You have D minor right at count 1, D minor 7 at count 2, C major at count 3, and then F major at count 4. So to demonstrate this sequence, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... That measure is also a split measure but with 4 chords. And then G minor 7th is next, which is for one measure. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... But the next two chords, C dominant 7th suspended and C dominant 7th, are in a split measure. C dominant 7 suspended right at count 1, C dominant 7 right at count 3. So it goes like this 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then it's followed by A minor which is for one measure also 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and but the next three chords the D minor, C, and F they are in a measure. D minor is right at count 1 and C is at count 3 and F major chord is at count 4. So to demo this part it goes like this 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and then E flat major is for one measure 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and C is also for one measure 1 and 2 and the next chords that we see is the alternation of F major and B flat major. Both chords are played for one measure. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 And let's just end the song with one downstroke on F major chord. Now to demo this last part of the song 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 1 and 2 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 I hope you enjoy this tutorial. What follows next is the chords and lyrics with the demonstration of how I play it. Have fun. Thank you for watching.